Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the Cal State Northridge Geography Department and geographyplanet.org. This is a video tutorial that is designed to help students learn to use the Huff model. The Huff model is a tool um, that you would use for retail site location. It is a multivariable uh, statistical model that is sort of based on um, the gravity model that you've probably seen already if you're in my class in which it compares the attractiveness of stores uh, against the sort of friction of distance and, and gives you um, a output that gives you some indication of a new store, a proposed location's attractiveness versus uh, a set of existing facilities or locations. Okay, so what you see on the screen before you is a map of the San Fernando Valley. I have a census tract population layer underneath a sort of a study area that I have set up for the San Fernando Valley. The point map here is of in and out uh, restaurants and this may or may not be an ideal use of the Huff model in part because people travel to uh, fast food as a matter of convenience more than as a matter of say necessity or they would tend not to drive past one for another the attractiveness of those stores what makes you go to an in and out one in and out versus another is more convenience of location rather than oh i really like that in and out it's bigger it's fancier or you know that kind of thing but for the purposes of this tutorial this will do so the first thing that you need to do when um, you're using this Huff model is that you have to have sort of this layer of competitors and in this case we're using in and outs as the, the layer of competitors and what we're going to do is add yet another uh, in and out and then we're going to compare it against the existing stores and so we need a new store and there's a number of ways you could do this but what I'm going to do is simply select one here, perhaps this one in um, Porter Ranch, and I'm going to copy it, and then I will paste it so that there are essentially two of them, and you can't really see this very much, but I'm going to grab here the, the move tool, I'm going to grab it and move it to, you know, some corner where I want to set up a new uh, in and out uh, here at Lassen and uh, DeSoto might be a place to put it. Okay, and I'm going to open the attribute table and we can see that we have two of these that are, are exactly the same. I need to, I'm going to go ahead and change this number here. Um, to indicate that this is so it's a different store altogether and um, where did I put it when we put it on we'll call it Lassen and this is in Chatsworth and um, I'm gonna go across here and change um, the sales volume and I'll make this 5,000 these numbers I've made up anyway that are in this column, the, the sales volume. And I'm going to go across here and I want to change um, this employee count um, from, because we're going to use this as a variable employee count. I'll make it, I don't know, 50. That looks about average for this group. Maybe I ought to make this one 25. So 30 or something so we don't have any tiny numbers in here and uh, that should do it and so what I really want to do at this point is I want to just export point 14 here the new one on Lassen as its own layer so I'm right-clicking here data 
export features. Um, I want to save this in my own default database. Okay, and I'm going to call it new new store. Click OK. And there's the new store. Double click on that, make it a black square. And then this one, I don't need anymore. So um, this is still in the in and out field. I want to delete it. And let's move some of these out. And there I have a new store. That was relatively simple. Uh, it is has an attribute. If we look at the attribute table, there it is. It's just one one store, and this this in and out has still 13, not 14 stores. So we're ready to go. So click on the analysis tool tab and bring up. Well, you can bring up tools, but this is the tool we're looking for is in business analysis. Business analysis now. Uh, this tool is different if you've been working on ARC uh, map. The Huff model is different um, in radically so in some ways from the old one. We're going to run the Huff model and you're going to see how it does things differently. This tool is pretty fussy as well, so pay close attention to I should probably click save my edits. Um, pay close attention to these details here. So the input facility features, these are the uh, in and outs. They're the existing ones. And give it a second, and it will prompt you for the ID field. Do not use uh, object ID. Um, you have to use something that is not generated by the um, the software itself. So info group ID will be fine. I could use street because if if they're unique, you want something that's uh, different for each one. And the input candidate feature, the candidate is our new store, and we want to use the same info group ID for that. The input sales potential features is going to be the, uh, the the San Fernando Valley census tract data. So I have to select that from the drop down menu. The, uh, make sure it's the tract data. And the sales potential ID field, again, don't use object ID, but ID, which is just the FIPS code. And the sales potential field, I could use uh, the, something different, but um, we could use total population, and I or I could scroll way down here until I saw something like uh, median disposable income. So why don't we use that? Um, and the output feature is um, well something I want to store in the um, my default. Geo database, and I will put uh, new store output. And what it's going to do is create a, a layer feature that will echo the census tract data in terms of boundaries, but it'll tell us basically how much uh, disposable income. Um, it'll give us a, a new field based on that one. So this part here, the attractiveness variables, we're going to use two of them. Uh, the first one would be uh, employee numbers, and so the idea is, I'm going to use it twice, is that the employee number is an indication of how desirable it is to shop at these particular in and outs. And then we'll add yet a second one just for the heck of it, sales volume. So those are to other, uh, uh, another determinant of the attractiveness of the store. If you were doing this for real, you would probably use sort of square foot of the stores or something like that, um, a mall or 
a furniture outlet or if it was a car dealership, how many cars are on the lot or something. The exponent here is a measure of how important that um, attractiveness variable is. And so why don't we we'll put uh, employee numbers at two and maybe we'll just leave sales volume at one and the distance exponent is the thing that balances against the other two. And in this case, it's set at negative 1.5, and the greater that is, the greater the friction of distance is to the store, and the, the, the more cost associated with traveling. And so if you... Uh, if everybody is walking to the store, then you would think, well, then that distance makes more sense. Um, or if people don't really want to, it wouldn't travel far for it, say like a 7-Eleven versus, say, an outlet mall. You would adjust that so that, that there is a greater cost of going. Um, and there are various distance elements that we could use here. Straight line distance would probably... Um, not be completely appropriate on uh, for something that people go to frequently in their automobile. Um, so we may use drive time, but I'm going to just leave it on straight line just so that it processes quickly. We can use the distance unit as miles, but all of these are in uh, my projections all in um, meters, so I'm going to switch this over to, to meters itself. I think it works fine under miles as well. Cross my fingers now, and I'm going to click run. I think it's all set up. And it worked. So we scroll out here, and this gives me an indication of the probability that each of uh, uh, that people will come from these census tracts to this new in and out. If you open up the attribute table for this new layer, you have the probability, and then this total is the um, median disposable income, so it's a measure of perhaps how much money you think is available um, the customers at this location. What you do notice is that, if I minimize this screen, that these areas that are in yellow are areas where there are um, lower probabilities that these people would shop at this in and out because they've got multiple in and outs and that they are further away. But there are no in and outs up here in Silmar or out here. And so this uh, model takes into account that, that they may come to this one because they don't have one of their own. And uh, the same plays here down in sort of the Woodland Hills area that people who are very close to this would not perhaps bypass this in and out to drive one to one over here, but people who have no uh, in and out in their immediate vicinity are slightly more likely to visit this location. So that's how this works. Now, what you would want to do is to run the Huff model on one or more of the existing stores as if it is a planned store to compare the numbers of the proposed store against existing ones to see if your new store holds up. And that's the end of this video tutorial.